Hello, everybody, and this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, and today I'm very excited because we have Christina Rucucci here today, and she is a amazing person. She is a dancer, a musician, and I'm forgetting one. Wait a second. We have one more thing, an actress, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> she does so many things, and she wears so many hats that I'm like trying <laughs> to remember them all, and she's here today, and she's just amazing, and she has an amazing story to tell, and so I'm so excited to have her on the show, and Christina, can you tell people a little about yourself and what you do? Sure. Hello. Um, my name's Christina. Um, <laughs> so a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in Southern California my whole life. Um, still here, still in Los Angeles now. Um, grew up as a dancer ever since the age of two, competing since I was four. Um, very intensely uh, started my dance career um, at a young age, training uh, like 15 hours every day, um, starting around like the age of nine, 10 that started. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I, I grew up and I got the amazing opportunity to travel all around the world um, all around the country. And then I got to explore outside of the country by myself some of the times as a, as a young child, which was so much fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got a lot of really amazing experiences, um, uh, because of dance, which is great. Yeah. Um, and then, um, my, my path kind of changed a little bit when I was diagnosed with Lyme disease, um, at age 15, which was an interesting time because it was kind of like, somewhat of the height of my dance career. Um, and I was touring with this company and I, uh, got really sick and then it took a very long time to get diagnosed Yeah, and, um, you know, slowly started, uh, deteriorate my body a little. And, um, so then I had to go into treatment full time. So I had to stop dancing, um, when I was, like 16 at the, uh, about to turn 16. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so I was, I was getting treatment for Lyme disease. Um, I started getting treated for it, uh, actually naturally, like naturopathically. Yeah. And, um, it worked for a while, but then, uh, the illness just started getting worse and worse and worse. So I had to like, I ended up finding this infectious disease specialist in Las Vegas. So I lived there with my mom for a couple of months in the hospital mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it was, a, it was definitely some dark times. Um, but, uh, very blessed to be able to have a family that was able to support me in my, my medical treatments, because mm -hmm. that's definitely a hefty thing to deal with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I was very lucky in that regard. Um, so then I eventually went into remission and, um, now I am, and so, so it was interesting kind of like getting sick led me to exploring so many other artistic outlets, which is such as like music, which I had been singing and playing guitar my entire life. I grew up in a very musical family. So there was, someone was always playing an instrument in my house or singing or something. <laughs> so I yeah. um, got to just like really dive into that and songwriting and um, just writing poetry, writing, whatever. Right. Um, and then something that I always, always wanted to do ever since I was like eight years old was, um, pursue acting. So I got to, you know, I convinced my parents to like, finally let me like try it. Cause it was always like, no dance is like the number one kind of focus. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so, so now very long winded, but <laughs> that's kind of where, where I'm at now. So, um, um, now I am teaching and choreographing at a studio here in Los Angeles and oh, wonderful. Uh, yeah. And I'm pursuing music, writing, um, producing, um, acting, all of it. So, you know, for people who, you know, have heard of Lyme disease, but don't really know much about it, yeah. maybe you could explain to them, you know, what it is and what it actually can do to the body, like how people suffer from it. Yeah, for sure. So um, I'll speak to my personal experience. Um, I know that some, so many people have had so many varying like levels of intensity when it comes to this disease um, for me. Um, so basically what it is, it's a, it's um you can get it by a tick bite. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I somehow got one when I, I think it was, I was, uh, on vacation and, um, we were doing this like horseback riding in the jungle. Mm -hmm. Um, I woke up the next day with like over 200 bites all over my body. Oh my God. 
Yeah, it was crazy. And my legs like all swelled into one. So because like the, the rash was so big, it was hard yeah. to identify. Um, so usually the re the way you can see if you are, um, you've been exposed to Lyme disease is if you have a bullseye rash. Oh. So yeah. So it looks literally just like a bullseye. Um, and that's how uh, a lot of people have been able to determine that it's Lyme. Um, but because I had like so many bites, they all welted together. I couldn't see. Oh my and goodness. So kind of went on with my life, <laughs> waited for them to fade. Yeah. I, immediately I got sick, but again, I just thought it was like a kind of a flu cold situation. I'm like, yeah. okay. Whatever. And then slowly over time, um, I just noticed, noticed a lot of like s changes that started very small that the, became more and more, uh, drastic. Yeah. I, my, uh, my body started changing a lot, um, which, we kind of just attributed to, oh, maybe she's just going through puberty, whatever. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, I also, when I, I was eight years old, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's and um, hypothyroidism. So I have oh, a wow. disorder. So like, we just kind of thought like, oh, maybe it's that just kind of acting up because she's gone through puberty or, you know. Yeah. Um, and then it started. Um, so I mentioned before that I would, I would like easily dance 15 hours every day. And of course I'd be tired, like like any human being would. Yeah, exactly. But I'd wake up and I, you know, do the same thing again the next day and every day following. So, um, so that I noticed became more and more challenging to the point where, um, I had, uh, I had developed like so much pain in my joints. It started in my hip, which yeah. still have a lot of this, these little things to this day, Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it started about 10 11 years ago. So, um, basically what it is, it, uh, it's a, it's a blood, uh, infection mm -hmm. and your blood pumps all throughout your body. So it slowly over time, just kind of tears away, it starts, you know, at your joints, your muscles. And, yeah. and, uh, by the time it was fully, uh, in my body, it, it was, I was infected in my, my heart and my spinal cord and my brain. So, um, at that point, I, uh, there, there was a point where I, uh, was unable to walk and that's so weird to say, <laughs> like out loud. Sorry, that's okay. Uh, it's, it's so weird to say that. Just um, I don't know. It's just not really something I talk about a lot because it's I don't know. Uh, kind of hard. dark. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to talk about. Um, it. Yeah, yeah. So, so that I mean, but, but it happened and it sucked. You know, it was not fun. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so then that's when I got put into like I went to the hospital for a while, and um, they were giving me uh like my medicine through uh what's called a pick line mm -hmm. which is basically like a little uh tube that they insert through uh like your bicep and they kind of like fish the tube into your heart mm -hmm. so that the medicine can pump like directly into your heart which goes directly into your bloodstream right. which is what the infection was so um so yeah so because at this point like it took so long to diagnose it was like fully all throughout my body which meant that it was going to take that much longer to treat yeah um, but even though it took me several years to figure out what was going on, like I was considered one of the, my case was considered to be like, oh, we found it early. Oh, <laughs> like there okay. are people that go like, I, I met this one woman who went like 30 years undiagnosed or something like that. Really? And she, and she, wow. had, she had chronic Lyme and she was, yeah, it was very sad. So I consider myself extremely lucky in that regard. Um, so yeah, so uh it, uh, it's, it's a, it's, it's not a disease that really is in a lot of ways taken seriously and it's not talked about a whole lot. Um, yeah. so, um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to, to discuss it and, you know, I, I get a lot of messages on my, my Instagram and stuff like that still, yeah. um, from people that follow me that, um, have Lyme disease and, you know, it's, it's actually so much more common than you would imagine. Right. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so, uh, so so uh, I I'm okay now though, which is which is very I'm very lucky yeah, for that. Thank God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sure. <laughs> you know, I think that's my biggest pet peeve is that you know you go on the internet and you'll type in like a disorder or a disease and you'll get the you'll get you know, the de definition, the diagnosis, the treatment, the symptoms, blah blah blah. Yeah. But you never you never hear about how to cope with it. Nobody, nobody talks about, you know, in the medical field on yeah. how to cope with it. They don't, they don't get together a bunch of 
patients and 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 analyze patients' perspectives of of you know how they got through it. And that's I think one of the biggest thing is that patients understand right away what they have. Once you explain to them, they get it. But you know, then you send them away with some medications or whatever the case may be, and now they have to live with it. And you know the the coping part of it, I think is one of the hardest things, you know, because now you're living every single day with this disease or this disorder and your whole life is completely changed. And I'm sure traumatically, it was really, it was really emotionally distressing for you. And, you know, it had changed your, your health, your body. It probably changed your mental health because it, the way you looked at life and, and everything you you started out with, you know, because I you know we were talking about this before the show as kids, you know, as you grow up, you have all these little goals and aspirations of what you want to do with your life and everything looks pretty and pink. And then as time goes on, you know, obstacles come our way and, you know, and we're not prepared for them, but they can change your life like overnight. Yeah. And it's like for you, how did you learn how to cope with it? Like, because I'm sure mentally, you know, first of all, how did it affect you mentally? You know, yeah. what happened? Um, that's a great question. <laughs> um, so at the time, um, my number one priority was how can I get back to dance? Um, so I, I felt, I think also going in, like I was a junior in high school mm -hmm. um, and go, I was like in my back of my mind, I'm like, okay, well next year, senior year, like I got to you know, I, I have so much that I have to be like a hundred percent ready to go for. Yeah. So this is kind of happening like at the worst possible time, you know, like I, you know, when you place your identity in something that you do specifically like with your body, like I think being an athlete is like such a crazy thing because it can be over in one second, yeah. you know, like due to injury or whatever it may be. Exactly. Um, so, so I think that was a incredibly tough lesson I had to learn was, you know, uh, but, but also very valuable and I'm glad I learned it because I think it's informed so much of like the way that I live my life now, yeah. um, which is like, where do you place your identity in? Uh, and if it's in external things or in what other people do or think or say about you, like that's not, there's no longevity in that. There's no real like value in that, you know? So I think, um, I think at the time I didn't have that perspective. Yeah. So it was like, oh, this is the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I became just so incredibly depressed. Right. And I, and I struggled with that for years and years after, um, yeah. at the time. Yeah. It was like, i wouldn't let anyone talk to me. I wouldn't let anyone come near me. I would lock myself in the room and turn off all the lights and just like watch yeah. a show and try to like pour my reality into something else. So I didn't have to face my own. And then I would wake up and I would have to like go into the hospital, get my treatment, whatever. And then I'd, you know, so it was just like this kind of like cycle that I was, I felt like I just kind of was forced into this very dissociative state where I was like, my body was going through the motions, but I yeah. wasn't really aware and then it hit me like around like 19, 20, 21. That's when it got like really bad, my yeah. mental health struggles. Um, I mean, yeah, it was it was real bad. Um, and I had, God, I had been in therapy like <laughs> since this started, since I was 14. Yeah. I'm 25 now. So, right. <laughs> um, so I had, you know, been moved around with a bunch of different therapists because I was very much in this state where I was like I was so angry at like what was going on I didn't understand what was happening to me I was angry at just everything like life yeah. world at just people trying to like help me I was angry when people would feel sorry for me it was just you know I was just the very very broken little girl, you know yeah yeah <laughs> um but thank thankfully I I found I some stuff happened that set me up with this um, really, really incredible therapist. And I've been with her ever since I was 21. So, um, so yeah, so I think that like having those resources of like really incredible mental health um, help and treatment uh, helped me process all of this and helped me kind of like grieve that part of me that was a dancer that, you know, lost that. And then 
found something else. And it, and it's it's like, yeah, I can see, I can look at it as a loss because in, in a way, yeah, it, it is. It's that, that life that I lived growing up feels like a different human. Mm-hmm. Um, but the life that I have now, like there's so many more things that I always wanted to do, but I felt like I couldn't because dance was everything, you know? Right. That I get to do now, which is like super cool, you know? Yeah. So, so yeah, so I, I definitely have, have healed a lot from it. I very much am still working through some of it that I didn't even realize I'm still dealing with, Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, it's also, also, what's also incredibly healing is like being a dance teacher myself now yeah. and like recognizing, I don't know. I just feel like, um, I don't know. It, it's, it's a really beautiful thing that I feel like I have the opportunity to do, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so I think just perspective and really working on myself in therapy and whatnot and <laughs> healing is, is, is really helped. But at the time it was, it was incredibly hard. Yeah. And, and the emotions you went through are so common, you know, the, the just feeling, you know, the, you know, the fear of not knowing what's going to happen next, Maybe yeah. the anger and, and the frustration and just, you know, and not like, you know, no, I don't, you know, I don't think anybody likes to be told what to do, have limitations, have to ask right. people for help, you know, yeah. especially, oh, yeah. you know, those are things that people like cringe, you know, and, and, and a lot of times people are willing to help you and they don't mind it and you know as another person on the outside that has a disorder or a disease you know for them it, it's like you know you don't want to be that person and you, you know you do feel like an inconvenience probably and you probably do you know you, you want to be that independent person that you know you're capable of being you know and mm-hmm. yeah. and to have to change your life because of this this disease that came into your life it could be very frustrated and like you said you know that that anger and frustration can go turns into the depression and you know depression can turn into suicide there's many people out there that have committed suicide because of conditions they've gone through that they just couldn't take the changes that were going on they just couldn't take all these emotions they just wanted to give up on life you know and that's the, that's the thing that's so important and that's why I love that you went and reached out for help and you kept reaching out to you found the right person is because it really, you do need help from somebody from an unbiased point of view that could look, you know, from outside the box and really guide you along the way, because it's traumatic when you have to go through, you know, having a condition and then feeling and going through all the symptoms and then, and then having your life change, you know, these are traumatic events, you know, yeah. and, you know, I, they really should be, it, it, these things should be talked about more, I, I feel in society, because there's yeah. so many people out there that are going through exactly what you went through, you know, and thank God today you're in remission, but it was a, it was a long haul. It sounds like it wasn't, but it was a long haul to go through all that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, I, I think something that I also want to, want to say about getting like mental health mental health help is um you have to be in a place where you're like really ready and committed to like doing the work that it takes to get better um and for so long because I was in that state of feeling so alone because all of my friends continued on with their life right they all got to dance they all got to compete and travel and train and do all these things and audition and stuff like that and I couldn't like I was left behind in that way you know so I so that feeling of isolation and that feeling of loneliness and like oh my god I'm the only person in the world experiencing this right now which obviously you're not right like other people are (laughs) dealing with illness all over the world but like you know when you when you're just in this little bubble that I was in yeah it's like like I'm straight up like alone here you know I think um so that feeling is is create it's it's tough it's really really tough but you know you 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 get out of that you you I think I think a big thing that made me realize like how common this really was was like sharing it because then Mm -hmm. like people you know hit me up and they're like oh yeah I went through the same thing here and this is the treatment that I got oh my gosh did you get and you're like whoa like I've never talked to anybody about this like except my doctor like you get it you know and it's it's really cool so that right that like sharing it really has kind of helped me find that like community which is super cool yeah yeah (laughs) 
No, I think that's, I think that's, that's great. You know, because I think that's once you have people that reach out and start saying, yeah, I know how you're feeling and, or, you know, this is what I did, you know, and it, it, it makes you, it does make you feel like you're not alone and, and you feel that support. And I think that's all you want is that support and knowing that there are other people that get you, you know, right. that you're not just like, you know, this person that, you know, is all here by herself and, you know, nobody gets me, nobody understands what I'm going through, you know, and, and, and cause fe the feeling of alone is, is, is such a terrible feeling when you're going through something traumatic and you feel all by yourself, even though there are people around you. And then sometimes, you know, I've heard this so many times, like, you know, yeah, I have support, but they don't know what I'm going through, you know? So right. and then you feel kind of, you know, even though you have the support, that they, you separate yourself because, you know, yeah, you, you know, that I'm going through something, but you just don't know how I'm feeling. You don't know, you get what, how I feel every night, or you don't get what's going in my head, or you don't get the symptoms I'm going through, you know? And uh, so it's important to have other people, you know, step out of the woodwork and, and, and be there, you know, as a support. Now, how yeah. It, it's really um, hard, but like to have that is so, so special and needed. Yeah, it definitely yeah. is. It definitely is. And have you ever feel like the stigmatism of, of you know, wanting to not tell anybody at first because you didn't want to be treated differently? You wanted to be treated just like oh. everybody else. Because yeah. I, I feel like in our, in our society, especially the U.S., you know, I don't know how it is in other countries, but especially in the U.S., I think every, there's so many labels and, and stigmatisms for everything. And people judge people way too harshly. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, I'm sure, you know, you know, how did you feel when you had it? Were you afraid to say anything? Did you want it, you, you want it, you wanted to feel like the norm, even though there is no such thing as the norm, but you wanted to. Yeah people just to recognize you as you and not think of you as the person that has Lyme disease. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's, that's really interesting. Um, okay. I think <laughs> to be honest with you, um, there was, there were, there were a lot of other things going on, um, at that time, uh, some of which I don't even know if I'm really even ready to talk about, you know? Right, so, like, yeah. so, um, I think, uh, a lot of people. So like I said, there were, I was kind of at this height, this peak of my dance career. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, people were always kind of like watching me, you know, yeah. I felt. And when things started changing for me, like, for example, like I mentioned earlier, like my body started changing a lot mm -hmm. and people would just be talking about that. And it was so incredibly hurtful. Yeah. It's like, oh, first of all, we're talking about like a child. Like, is this appropriate? No. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but um, but also like I but I felt like I felt so I that almost made me want to come out and be like, no, like you don't understand. Like this is going on and I don't know, I don't like I'm not nothing has changed with me, like, but things are happening to me and I don't know what's going on. Like I'm in the doctor, like I'm at the doctor like every other day at this point and nobody knows, yeah. like not, not even my closest friends. So like people are just speculating, like what's going on with her? Like, why does she yeah. look like that? Or why is she whatever? And it's like, so in that regard, like as, as a kid, you like, you want to feel understood so bad. Yeah. So part of you wanted to just like scream it being like, I don't know, but I'm going through some health stuff. Like, um, but then at the, you know, looking at that now, it's like, uh, you didn't need to, you didn't need to feel the need to do that because people should not jump to conclusions and assume things. You don't know what somebody's experiencing and going through every day. Exactly. Um, so it, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of hard. I find myself somewhere in, in the, in between. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, of like wanting so badly to be understood, but also wanting to be like, you know what? No, like, you know, um, but I, I know at the time, um, eventually I got to a point where like, I kind of did have to say something. So like, I kind of, uh, because I sort of disappeared. <laughs> yeah. And um, at the time I had won this title and I, uh, part of the, the, the thing that I won was that like, I, I got to travel with this, these two dance uh, conventions, these companies um, all throughout the country every weekend. Yeah. And um, I was like, it was, it was like such a goal of mine to be able to like win this because it was such an incredible experience to be able to work with like some of the best choreographers in the, in the world yeah um, assisting them and getting to meet people from 
a bunch of random places that I never would have gotten the opportunity to go to. So like right. that was I was that was my priority to just to to kind of travel and to tour and to dance and to work and all of that. So um so when I got to the point where I was so sick that I had to stop. Yeah. Okay, well, where'd she go? And so I kind of like I was like, okay, yeah, no, this is going on. Like I have Lyme disease and I'm in the hospital, whatever. Right. <laughs> you know? And um there were there were a lot of people that were very supportive of me. Um, but yeah, I uh it got to the point where I felt like I had to say something. Yeah. Uh, about that, but it was very like um I remember being so <laughs> there's one thing I that sticks out to me. I remember being so firm in the statement of like I don't want anybody to feel like like bad for me right now like this is not why I'm yeah. trying to say this like because I'm just uncomfortable with that kind of attention of like oh yeah man, I understand that you're coming from a place of like I care about you and I'm sorry this is happening and I I appreciate that I'll take that but like yeah. don't, don't feel bad for me like it's like I'll be fine like it's you know yeah exactly <laughs> so, so it was that kind of like complex thing going on in my brain um yeah so so part of it I I, I was vocal about but like I said like there's still a lot of things that um even before Lyme disease that happened that I have not talked about at all so right depends I, yeah no I, I I get you and I, I I think it's so important that you know people learn not to be so judgmental because I think that's one of the biggest problems we have <laughs> you know is that people don't understand until you walk through someone's shoes don't make judgment on other people because people are so, you know, I find it where pe when people do that, it's a great way to ignore your own flaws and to focus on other people, you know, and it makes you feel better because then you don't have to look at your imperfections and your flaws and the things going on in your life. So why not point the finger and, and look at other people that you think, you know, are not, you know, being perfect. Again, another word that doesn't exist in our society, but we use the word. And, yeah. you know, I, you know, and I used to hate also, you know, you don't want you be empathetic, but don't feel sympathetic for me. You know, it's, yeah, that's it. You know, it's yeah. like, you know, I, I get the empathetic. That's very nice that you're empathetic, but don't feel sorry for me. There's no need to feel sorry, you know, and, you know, and, and in your head, you're probably like, I'm going to get through this because you know what, if you didn't have that in the back of your head, you wouldn't be where you are today. You know, right, you right. had it in the back of your head. You had that inner strength. It was just getting to that point where you were able to actually be courageous enough to jump out of your shell and empower yourself and to move forward in life, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, what are some of the ways that you were able to empower yourself? Because there's so many people out there that struggle, you know, with Lyme disease and, you know, so many people get stuck and they just want to give up. They don't want to, you know, they give up on their dreams, their aspirations, their goals, because they're struggling with the, the, the symptoms and they're struggling with their emotions. You know, the one thing we, you talked about was going to get help, you know, and, and, you know, and reaching out to doctors. Cause I, I know so many people that try to be their own doctors and it just doesn't work. You know, you can't be your own yeah. doctor. You know, I, I always think you have to have, you know, you have to have, you know, good doctors that you can have good communication with that get you that are good at what they do and that you can communicate communicate with and work together and me and you know what I think too I think people think everything's going to be one two they want everything one two three and you know sometimes especially when you're de dealing with diseases and disorders it could take years before you get to that point where you're e either in remission or you're feeling better or it's under control you know but you have to you know you have to somehow learn to you to stick with it and to really be, you know, have that strength and to have that hope, you know, and, and how did you have that strength and, and hope, you know, like, how did you hold on and, and not give up? Oh man. Um, well, I mean, if I'm being really honest, there definitely were many times that I like <laughs> felt like I didn't have any other choice, but to just like give up. Right. No, I get it. It, it just is, gets really overwhelming. And yeah. I think the mental toll as well as the physical, like mm -hmm. that is so incredibly overpowering sometimes. Oh yeah. So I think, you know, I think allowing myself to be a human being and like feel those things and like, yeah. be like this is okay. This is a really hard thing that you're going through and it's okay mm -hmm. to like have a moment, you know? Yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, yeah. So just kind of giving that permission, but also knowing when to be like, all right, and we're done with that, you know? Um, yeah. I think 
Um, I think a really big thing for me was um, at this point in my life, like because I had dealt with like the the deterioration of my body over time, dancing became no longer fun for me. Yeah. Um, it became really painful and really frustrating because yeah. I could barely get through a two minute piece. Right. Um, let alone dancing hours and hours and hours on end. I was really frustrated. Um, cause you know, it was like such a drastic downfall of a switch, you know? Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. so so it just became like this isn't fun anymore this is like causing me more physical and mental pain than it is joy yeah. um <laughs> can I do something else now you know um because <laughs> yeah. like my entire life I didn't do anything but dance right. so uh, like with like playing music for fun with my family when I got home from dance yeah. like that, that's about it uh never any sports never any anything like just dance so um something that really like would always give me an excitement in this yeah. like really dark part of my life right. was that um okay well what can I do right now with the limitation that has been placed on me right and like learn I don't know I can like read this script and like learn a scene from it or like learn a monologue from it and practice yeah. that and right I can uh, teach myself this song on my guitar I can try to write something like, and so that's where um, all of that really sprouted for me was in this state where my body was no longer able to do what it previously was able to do. So like yeah. my mind and all of that other stuff kind of took over and I would just really pour all of that like into, into writing, into writing music, into like learning monologues into watching films that I was like interested in being in one like yeah. stuff like that you know <laughs> so I think um kind of just placing my mind on like okay well what can I do let mm -hmm. me focus on that because it's really what I always wanted to do but I never felt like I was able to or I was right. had permission to mm -hmm. so um so yeah I think that along with like if we're being real like yeah my my family's financial ability to pay for my medical like that was a humongous like if I didn't have that I don't know what would have happened right yeah so combination of all of that you know yeah oh for sure you know yeah. and and it's funny like when you talked about like the emotional and the physical aspect like I had written an article you know like a couple years ago and I asked people what's more impactful the emotional or the, the physical part of an illness. And it was 50, 50. It was like, you know, yeah. Cause you know what, like going through my own stuff, I was like, you know, it took a toll mentally on me and it took a toll physically on me. And it's like, sometimes it, it was more mental than physical. And sometimes it was more physical than mental, you know? And it was like, it was like playing tennis and I, I was the ball going back and forth, you know? And, and at, at some point I was like, you know, I just was curious how other people felt. And, and, you know, it really was like, it took a toll on both ends of people's lives. When it came to any disease or disorder, it was like, you know, the mental and the physical because like there are days when if your body's aching and, and hurting and you're going through stuff and you know sometimes people were so fatigued they couldn't get out of bed or they're hurting you know and their body is like you know you're you know you're x amount of years old and you shouldn't be feeling like this and you know and you're like forcing yourself to to try to get around you know and then the mental aspect is thinking about you know what I was or what I could be you know yeah. and then you're like that gets you like into like a depressed hole that gets you like, you know, it, it, it could really play, play a big toll on your mind, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, people were like, like going back and forth. I went back and forth too. And it was just like, like you said, I had to look at what other things I was really good at, you know? And then I started to realize, well, maybe it just wasn't meant to be. And then being in the field of the media, I always saw that just like you said with athletes, they were never in the A class for very long. It was an expanded amount of time, everything, athletes, actresses, actors, everybody. They were always in that specific area if they made it to that area 
for a specific amount of time because they nobody stays in that area for a, for forever. You know, you yeah. really there's the, the, you know, and and as time evolves, so does their careers. You know, and yeah. then they have to branch out and look at well, what else am I good at? It just happened that we had to do that at an earlier stage. You know, and that maybe did make us more mature, but then it it made us realize that we had strength in other areas that we probably you probably didn't even recognize that you had. You know, and. Yeah you know, and then you were able to utilize them for the good. For sure. Yeah. You know, and I think what you're doing is great today. You know, like, I, I think that's one thing that we probably have to stress to people is that if you can't do one thing, don't give up, you know, there's other yeah. things that you could focus on because now you're, you're doing things that you love that you yeah. never got to do before. And you thought right. of it, but you never got to do it because you didn't have the time and you were doing other things, but now you get to do those things. I think that's been the the, the best part about all of it was um, really just like f stepping into like the person that I always felt like I wanted to be and that I, who I really was, you know? Yeah. Um, I never saw myself as just a dancer. Um, yeah. I always saw myself as like, I, I always joke around like, well, I'm not. I'm not good at anything else other than like <laughs> three things that I like really do. <laughs> but I mean, there's like a little bit of truth to that, you know, like yeah. I really feel like what I'm doing is what I'm meant to be doing because I, yeah. there are so many other people, like I, I could never be a, a math teacher. It's just not in the cards for me. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah. There are just, there are other things <laughs> that I will leave myself to. So yeah, uh -huh. I think like finding, finding all of that, like you got to go through some of that dark stuff. Yeah. Some, to like push you to you know where where you're really supposed to be and I feel like that was that whole situation for me which I'm very grateful for looking back at oh yeah I I think I think everybody in life has a story we all go through something in life you know and but the the best stories are when you fall down and you're able to pick yourself up and you actually take you know an obstacle in your life and you turn it into something positive and instead of focusing on the negative you realize that you know what happened to you it was the past and you can't change it so then you focus on the present and then you made something of of what you had at that moment into your future, you know, yeah. and now you're building a future, a productive future, and you're teaching others, you know. So I, I think that's amazing. I think you're amazing. Thank really you so do. much. I do. Right back at you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Now, if if you had to like, you know, if you wanted to emphasize like a few things to our mm -hmm. listeners, you know, from everything we talked about today, what are some things that you feel are important that you'd like to emphasize? Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's a big one. Yeah. Um, many things. Uh, I'll just kind of say what comes to my mind here. Um, first and foremost, I think you have to, you have to be kind to yourself. Um, as cliche as it is, um, it is, it, I know what it's like to be horrible to yourself and uh, you don't deserve that. You know, right. it's, it's um you deserve to to give yourself the kindness and the patience that you would somebody that you love dearly it's sometimes it's harder to give that to ourselves um yeah. especially when we're struggling with whatever it may be so um please be kind to yourself <laughs> be patient with yourself um and know that if there is something that is really big and heavy weighing on you um it's not it doesn't have to be permanently forever written yeah. in stone you know, um, you do most of the time, depending on the situation, you do have the power to at least change the mindset that you're in. And once you do that, maybe it can lead you to other things and pull you out of that dark place. Yeah. Um, I am a humongous advocate for um, seeking mental health help. So if you feel if you feel like you are in a space where you could benefit from that, um, try to find some resources there are many many out there um give yourself the help that you feel you need or even if you don't feel you need it that you deserve yeah. uh, because you deserve to feel okay you know like right. <laughs> you deserve to feel good right. um yeah and and I don't know I feel like I feel like every day is, is going to be different um so just kind of take it take it where wherever you're at in this moment and um I don't know just like take a breath, take a beat. I think practicing uh, gratitude is really hard sometimes, mm. <laughs> but really essential. Um, it's definitely something that I 
need to be doing a lot more on the daily for sure. So I think I needed to take my own advice there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. That's, there's so many more things I could say. <laughs> I think but those yeah. are great things, you know, and positivity and gratitude are key, you know, and, yeah. and it's something you have to just work at. I think creating a journal is really great too, you know, when it comes to positivity and gratitude, you know, just writing down the things that you, that are positive in your life and, and, and things that you have gratitude for. Cause I feel like yeah. sometimes we don't realize like the littlest things in our life, how meaningful they are until they're taken away from us. And, yeah. you know, that was when, you know, I really realized so many things is that, you know, the, the simplest little things when they were taken away, is when I realized how meaningful and how important they were. But at the Absolutely. moment I had no clue. It didn't even seem like anything, you know, and I think just getting through it. My biggest thing for me was being positive. Just positivity was key for me. I, 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 even when negative things happen, I tried to pull out something positive from the negative, you know, like yeah. I went through something really bad. I was like, well, it made me a stronger person, you know, and I, I just tried to like pull something, I, anything I could, you know, and not focus on the negative. And I, I think that was like, the main thing was positivity was, and gratitude were the two things that got me through everything I got through in life. Absolutely. Yeah. That's so, so, so important. Now you have a lot of services that you provide. Can you tell us some of the things that you do? And yeah. Um, so uh, I actually, this past um, March, I uh, released um, my first, I've, I've released some music stuff in the past, but this is my first time releasing like original work um, yeah. with my, with my brother who is a, a very, very talented musician and producer out in Nashville um he and I have been creating together since I can I can even I can't even remember literally mm -hmm. since we both learned how to talk yeah. <laughs> so so I'm it feels very special to be doing this with him um so yeah so that is called Ophelia and um you can watch the the video that I made um it is on my Instagram which is just at Christina Vacucci. Um, same thing with all of the other social media platforms. Um, so Instagram, Twitter, which I guess, no X, sorry. <laughs> and, um, Facebook. Yeah. But, um, so, so you can listen to that music on all the streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple music, um, iTunes, all of that good stuff. Um, I am working on another uh, music project that will be coming out this summer. Oh, very and exciting. Hopefully, yeah, <laughs> hopefully following um, more of that, more of like a full sort of EP situation. <laughs> I don't know. I've really been like put, I've really been like diving into the music this year. It's been like kind of the like a really fun, cool passion project that I've done. Yeah taking on and as well as kind of like producing uh my own my own videos and writing them and all that stuff um and uh a couple acting things also in the works right now um can't really say too much about it but um yeah. But yeah, so oh that's awesome all of that. <laughs> and where can people find you on your website what's your website address oh yes yeah. my website is just christina um and yeah you can find all of the all of the links to everything on there um but yeah if you just Google my name, like I, you know, <laughs> stuff will come up. <laughs> oh, also oh, there's like a the YouTube as well. There's lots of right. stuff on YouTube. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Great. I, and thank you so much for coming on this show. I, I think, you know, this has been a, a whirlwind of, of information. I, I think your story is amazing. I think you're amazing. And I think a lot of the advice you provided today for a lot of the listeners that are going through similar situations was amazing. I think, you know, it's great to know that other people are out there that are going through similar situations and to see how far you came and how well you are now and how you are in remission and how you overcame so much emotionally, physically, you know, and how you're, you're pumping along and you're just making, you know, beautiful marks in the world. You know, I, I think it's, it's so special. And I think it's very encouraging and motivating to others because it's people like you that help other people get out of their, their shell, you know, because everybody has something beautiful about them. Everybody has the ability to be somebody. It's just believing in ourselves and just getting that inner strength and just pulling it out of us and just yeah. going with it, I think. 
Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I think this has been such a cool conversation. <laughs> so oh. thank you for that. I really appreciate oh. that. You're incredible as well. Oh, so thank, you. thank you. Oh, yeah. thank you so much. This has been <laughs> great. Thank you so much for being on the show. Maybe we'll have you. I, I'd love to have you back on, you know, and yeah, for sure. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a great day. Thank you so much. All right. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>